A very interesting comment was posted under a video I did some time ago on how white guys who are interested in dating black women should approach. Kind of gave them some guidelines for how to approach and how to, with, you know, kind of things that were appropriate to say, the things were inappropriate to say, and how to avoid getting shot down early in the game. So under that video, a comment was posted that I happened to see this morning. And uh, even though it's, it, it's, the letter's written like it's from the female's perspective, but the poster's name is Jim. So Jim, you ain't fooling nobody. It was like, Jim is obviously the guy who's the thing is being written about. And, uh, you know, he just wanted to, I guess, ask the question in a way that would put him at the least risk of rejection but no need for all that here you know you got to be a big boy when you come on this channel but I'm going to respond to it like it's written from the male perspective because that's what I think it actually is so anyway dear Deborah excellent and truthful video Deborah as a black woman named Jim living in the Lon in the in the UK in London in her 40s and knows 100% that a white man from France is seriously into her but he never says anything he owns and is CEO of the company you just know when someone is into you but he won't say anything and is always staring or trying not to stare or not making eye contact in public cuz his eyes and the way he looks at me will give him away I'm old school, so no, I won't be making the first move. He needs to step up and be a man or forget it. There are lots of skinny, blonde-haired, blue-eyed women around in short skirts in the office. He doesn't pay them the slightest bit of attention. I study him. I just don't understand why he won't speak, and I've made it clear in my niceness and caring and supportive conversation and just being nice to him in general that he knows I'm interested. Don't think he's married but has kids and is older than me. What shall I do? Maybe I'm a fetish. We have serious chemistry and laugh and joke and are so attracted to each other, but he's fighting it like hell. It's like he's in turmoil. It's written all over his face. Okay, first of all, let me admonish you about this maybe I'm a fetish bullshit. Why do you have to throw in some low self-esteem assessment like, you know, there's something wrong with you and you're not worth anything and you so that's the that's your default that's your default thing that you think about this man I mean do you really think that somebody would be in his position in society and be really wrestling with himself like he is if he that's all you were was a fetish he would have jumped on you with both feet so no that's not it and stop saying things like that don't even put thoughts like that in your head Ugh, that stuff drives me crazy okay let's start at the top okay you obviously are an employee at this man's company do you not think that that alone would give him reason to pause I mean really that never came into your mind you work for him don't you think I mean I don't know what his policies are if they're you know how big this company is or you know anything like that but I mean there must be some kind of a situation where something's in written form about sexual harassment or dating on the job I mean there's always whether it's written or unspoken some kind of guidelines that people adhere to within a certain corporate culture I don't know what this culture is I'm just throwing out some ideas I don't know how what size the company is I don't know is it more you know there's multiple locations I mean you know you didn't really give much information about that but um, I'm just saying that is a most definitely probably 80% of why he's pausing. You know, it's just, I mean, come on now. The second thing is, he, of course, he's, res he's in turmoil because in a situation like that, I don't know if he would be violating his own company policies, but he's also got to deal with the, uh, the questions that are going to come up. Like if you're working for him, um, are you going to be getting favoritism? Yeah, well, there'll be some displays of favoritism as far as time off or pay raises and promotions and things like this. I mean, he's got a lot to think about. Don't think this man became CEO of his own company uh, by being stupid and not thinking things through. You know, I mean, this this is this could be a very this could have very serious ramifications for him on his business. The also the concern is. You know what's what is the mental state of the other employees towards you know interracial relationships is this going to cause him a problem 
Is he going to have to deal with some kind of, you know, employee issues that he's really not trying to deal with because, you know, they're pick, they're deciding that he's picking somebody black over them and they feel like entitled and that they're better. You know, a lot of stuff, the issues that we as black women have dealt with from white females, you know, it wouldn't feel like they're in competition for a man of power and means. Um, we've all done it. Even, I mean, we've all had to deal with that nonsense. Even just in bullshit ass jobs where there was no man of, you know, the man wasn't even at issue. They just want to be in power and have the upper hand just because they're white and you're not. So, you know, we've all dealt with that. I don't know what it's like over there, but over here, that is like an everyday thing. You just, you know, run into people who are insecure and you black woman of confidence, education, and you know what you're talking about. And, you know, you, you not, don't back down and stuff like that. Oh, my God. You did. They be it for you. So the other, the other thing is, um, he's probably, you know, he's weighing all those things that I just said. He's also thinking about how you're going to respond. Now, we talked about his, you know, the issues he has to deal with. Well, what about the ones that you may have to deal with? If he's a guy who's considerate and, you know, doesn't want to cause you any problems, he's going to hold back simply because he doesn't want you to have to be dealing with the nonsense that he may feel is coming down the pike or may know is coming down the pike because he's had interactions with the other females in your office. You know, he may have heard something that you don't know anything about. The other consideration is, okay, so say you guys get, you know, you guys are become a hot item. Um, everybody in the office knows that you're a hot item because there's no rules at your company that prevent that. So then what? Where does that go? What do you do with that? Does that mean that, you know, at some point you stop working at the company because either you get another job somewhere else or you're not working at all or you guys get married or something? I mean, what does this mean? What is this? Where do you anticipate that this might go? And what are the what's the big picture here? Um, but I'm thinking that no matter what, you know, you don't say how long this has been going on, but the fact that you you know you're talking about how he looks at you all the time and stuff, I'm thinking it has to be at least a few months. So, what if I were you, I know you say you don't want to make the first move, but unfortunately, girlfriend, you're going to have to. He has too many concerns. And if he's a good catch, if you guys have good chemistry, and you want to, um, you know, at least get him to the point where he can enjoy a, a lunch with you or a cup of coffee or something um, away from the office, that's what you need to do and you need to set that up now i don't know you know when is his birthday does there's some special holiday what about your birthday i mean there has to be something coming up soon where you that can be your excuse where you say you know that you would like uh him to or to take him to lunch or take him to have a drink or take him to have some coffee or you know a sandwich or something like that um away from the office it won't be a big deal It'll be something, you know, very short. I mean, if, especially if it's lunch or coffee. I mean, those kind of things have time parameters around them. You see what I mean? It's not like it's going to mosey in from dinner into drinks, into dancing, into a movie, and into bed. I mean, you're going to have very short, you know, it's going to have a short time frame around the, uh, the time that you two spend together. But you think about that. You know, I don't know what you, what you two are into or what's nearby your office or, you know, if you even like coffee or or uh but tea is big over there huh well whatever okay tea um whatever you want to do but somehow you're going to have to figure out a way to open that door now be prepared emotionally in case he doesn't walk through it like i said he's got a lot if he's thinking like i'm thinking he has a lot to consider there's a lot to of moves that he needs to to uh be aware of it's like playing chess if he moves there, like towards you, what are the other moves that are going to take place on the board, perhaps by other people? How might he get checked or checkmated? Will it cost him something? There's a lot to think about here. Um, but that would be my suggestion, that you, you know, take, a, take, a, take the initiative to 
say, you know, let's get a cup of coffee or something. You know, it's my birthday or it's your birthday or it's whatever day it is. It's a sunny day. I mean, whatever you want to say. But um, I don't know. It's just it's written all over his face. And I can see that, you know, he sounds like he's definitely in turmoil. But I'm thinking that the things uh, that he has to be concerned about are very real and may impact his business in some way. I'm thinking that uh, you two need to be away from the office though and talk about this like big boy, big girl and and see what you know what what could happen. I mean he may decide that the risk outweigh the benefits in which case you know you guys will just continue as you are as long as you're comfortable with that. If you to talk and decide to do something else, you know consider all the things that I that I proposed here, all the possible issues that the two of you may face or that he may face you know as the CEO of his own company um, and even the clients I mean you know what I mean maybe he has clients that are somewhat racist and things like that I don't know from what I hear you know the French are a lot more open-minded that's where Jason Josephine Baker left the United States in the 40s and went over to uh, to live in Paris and James Baldwin was there I mean a lot of you know black, um, black people in that era left the United States and went to Paris and Fran you know, France and uh, were welcomed there. So that's what I hear. I've never been to Paris, so I don't know. I've never been to London, so I don't know. But um, that's what I hear. So um, it's something to think about, though. I'm kind of wondering. I mean, my mind is jumping ahead because I'm wondering what the hell is going on in this guy's mind. I'm just trying to think of all possibilities that he could be thinking about. But those are some of the things that came to my mind. Uh, you know him better than me. So you think about what I said and how it applies to the corporate culture in which you two work, the company that he owns, the other employees, and how the this you two starting to date or see each other or look googly-eyed at each other might impact them. And then you make your move accordingly, okay? That's what I got to say, but, you know, it's the bottom line for most men. You know, if you need to step up, you're going to have to do it uh, once you figure out all this this infighting that you're doing with yourself, you're going to either have to leave her alone and stop staring at her, or you're going to have to step the fuck up and be a man. There's only those two choices. All right, this is Deb Cooper from SurvivingDating.com signing out. I'll be back with another video real soon. Bye-bye.